Hey everyone, I did a video recently on some tips for new Savage Worlds players, and I thought I'd follow that up with some more tips for new Savage Worlds players. Hey everyone, it's Carl with Tabletop Tango. Look at the bubbles, do the stuff. We'd love your support. We'd love likes, surprise, surprise? Subscribes, all that sort of thing. And we also have a podcast called Mastering the RPG. It's a general podcast. Obviously, some Savage World stuff sneaks in there, but uh, hopefully you'd like that as well. So what do I want to talk about today? Well, I want to go through some um, additional tips for new players. Um, the video I did before had some pretty basic stuff, talking about bennies and that sort of thing. This one, we want to talk about some additional ideas that new players should know um, to up their game when it comes to Savage Worlds. So the first one is, let's talk about the initiative system. Um, I've, I've got videos on the initiative system, talk about that a lot of times, so, but let's talk specifically about some things that new players sometimes forget that you can take advantage of. The first one is um, holding actions. So you don't have to go, and don't feel like you have to go right at the point in your turn. You can hold your action to find out and look at to see what other players are doing, make strategies around you're going to go after this other player who's going to do a test or what have you. So you can take advantage of holding to um, sort of pick where you might fall into the order. You can also then, if you're at the bottom of the order, you can hold into the next round of combat and start at the top of the order. Um, and that can become handy as well. So just kind of keep that in mind. Now, when you're on hold, there's a cool thing you can do that you can wait for an opponent to try to take an action and then you can interrupt them. So let's say you have somebody who's in, um, who's, who's in cover and they come out of cover, they're running out of cover so that they can shoot you. You can interrupt that shooting action once they're out of cover. And how do you do an interrupt? Well, it's a... Um, opposed athletics role, and the person who wins that um, gets to take their turn um, at that moment. And if it's you, then you've interrupted, you can take your turn, and then the other person finishes their turn afterwards. So very, very cool. Um, just learn how to interact with the initiative system. There's things like um, edges that help out uh, quick, level-headed, that provide additional cards or let you do more pick and choose where you want to go in the round. Um, if there's also benefits to understanding when things happen in the in the turn order, like for example, you can have calculating, which gives you a bonus if you go later um, at the end, like five or below in the initiative order. And so you can let you can use level headed, which gives you two cards. Um, from the initiative deck and pick the lowest one. So you can leverage calculating. So there's things you can do there. And then obviously bennies are a big part of the game and you can spend a Benny to get a new action card if you absolutely want to get another one. So learn the initiative system. There's some nuances there. There's some edges that interact with it, but it's, it's part of what makes Savage Worlds pretty cool in my opinion. Uh, second thing is it's not really Savage Worlds specifically, but if you think about Savage Worlds with the way it's designed, um, it's hard to get good balance. Um, it, people try and they do it, but with uh, exploding dice, um, with the fact that you have to get past toughness of creatures, and so sometimes you could be just like beating on them and never getting past their toughness, um, it's hard to balance exactly. There, there's not the same thing as a challenge rating that you can go by. So retreating is an absolute option. If you get hit and you take a wound, and it looks like you're just not able to um, overcome this creature, absolutely retreat. Um, get ready, get that wound healed, you know, use the healing roll, 10 minute roll, a uh, rule to have some time to do the healing. Um, test, if you don't want to retreat, tests and support can help with creatures that are a little tougher. Um, so you can have one of your friends support you uh, and give you those bonuses for your um, action or your attack. And so if let's say they do a test and they make the opponent vulnerable, that plus two really can help you out if you're trying to get past um, a high parry or you're trying to um, really damage something that's kind of hard to damage. So you can kind of all gang up your bonuses for one person to make that attack if each one of you are having a hard time um, making things happen. Uh, 
Another thing that's pretty cool is that you can forget about is called shots. You can pinpoint where you want to take a uh, shot, um, where you want to hit, and you just take a penalty. Now, why you would want to do that? Well, if you take a called shot for a head or a vital, a vital sign, you can get a plus four to damage um, on that hit. So if you want to do a headshot and you're successful, you'll get plus four in damage. Um, now, the negative is it's a minus four to hit um, that head, uh, and so that penalty applies, but if you're willing to live with that penalty, but you're looking for maximum damage, you can take advantage of that. Other thing is armor in Savage Worlds. If you look at the book, they talk about pieces for different spots. On So there's armor for the arms, armor. there's helmets, there's torso. And in Savage Worlds, a hit normally assumes that you're shooting right or you're hitting right in the middle of the torso, um, center mass. And that's where people typically wear their armor. With a called shot, you might be able to call past armor that's being that's not protecting if somebody's not wearing a helmet what a great opportunity to take a called shot um, their armor no longer applies um, so that makes it a little easier to get past their toughness that plus four damage doesn't hurt so that sort of thing really can help out um, when you're in combat and you need some more options of uh, to do more damage or bypass armor um if you are a tactical kind of combat person and you like tactics and the kind of thing that you'd find in some other games, there are a lot of stuff in Savage Worlds that you can start leveraging, you can build a character out. For example, there's Counter-Strike, which gives you a hit if somebody misses you. Um, that edge, there's First Strike, which if somebody comes near you, you can attack them first. So you can build your tactics around capabilities that you have. Um, there's obviously gang up bonus, so you can leverage multiple partners together. There's things like frenzy, which gives you two die roll um, in a in a single melee attack. There's sweep, which allows you to affect multiple opponents, um, and then you can use weapons for testing. So if you're really a tactical combat kind of person, you can build out with edges a very interesting character that's really focused on the kind of things you want to do. Um, Eric did a video on dual wielding, and so he talked a lot more about all sorts of cool stuff that you can do to build out a dual wielding melee character. And so it's all about that, and it really, really just opens the, opens the door to a lot of possibilities. Um, another thing that early players sometimes forget is shields. Shields are very, very useful. They not only give you um, potentially cover, they give you a parry bonus. You can use them for as a weapon too. You can do a bash to do strength plus d4. So shields are very, very powerful tool to take advantage in Savage Worlds. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, it's it's extremely useful. They're great tools. People forget about them a lot, especially if you're playing a modern game. You don't think of using a shield, but riot shields exist, and they might make sense when you're breaching the bad guy's headquarters, right? Um, I talked a little bit about the initiative system. Let's talk a little bit more about when you get that joker. Jokers are a great opportunity with that plus two that you get to take advantage of multi-actions. Because remember, if you take two actions, you get a minus two on each action. If you take three actions, you get a minus four on every one of those three actions. And so sometimes you people feel like they don't want to take that multi-action penalty. They want to be careful. They So they do their one hit. Jokers, that plus two, now you're, you're just at a straight roll. Might as well take advantage of multi-actions. Um, there's there's a whole bunch of uh, uh, edges and stuff like that can also help. Like trademark weapon gives you a plus one, and that helps overcome that multi-action penalty. So um, there's also things like marksman, double tap, um, frenzy, all sorts of things that can uh, be taken advantage of uh, either by having multiple attacks like frenzy in one attack or making multiple action penalty lesser. Um, but don't forget about that Joker. That Joker is a great opportunity to do a multi-action um, at a straight roll. Um, and then the last thing is don't feel that combat is the only thing that you can build a character out. A lot of games have face characters, but sometimes the face character feels uh, lesser because there's only a couple of skills related to it. There's not a lot of build out that you can do. Um, but Savage Worlds has a lot of edges 
a lot of things that make building out a face character or a social character being a very powerful option. Um, like, for example, if you want to do something where in, in combat you're intimidating your opponent to try to get them flustered and that sort of thing and taking advantage of tests, there's things like menacing, which gives you a plus two on your intimidation, which can really help um, in that situation. Rabble Rouser, uh, this gives you to do tests in a medium blast template for intimidation or taunt. Very, very cool stuff. Um, and then, of course, Humiliate. Um, gives you a free reroll on taunt. So if you're really trying to build out a test character uh, with taunt or intimidation, there's a lot of opportunities there. So this is just some more tips for new Savage Worlds players you might not have think, thought about. Absolutely understand that initiative system, dig deep, know how it works, take advantage of things like shields, um, learn how jokers and some of those... Uh, Different edges can help you with multi-action penalties or help you um, really build out an interesting character. And don't forget about called shots because you can get past that armor or you can do a bunch of damage if you're shooting for the head. And I always play shooter characters, so I like, I like shooting for the head. So anyway, I'm Carl with Tabletop Tango. Look at the bubbles, do the stuff. Really begging you for support, likes, subscribes, all that good stuff, and we appreciate it. Um, again, check out Mastering the RPG as well. Uh, great podcast, at least I think so, and we're in our third season. So, um, again, I'll catch you later, um, and have a good one.